nuclear reactors on board of Russian cruiser Admiral Nakamov activated. Earlier, the first reactor on board was activated at the end of December 2024. Originally plans called to have both reactors active by the end of 2024 so it seems that the modernization of the RFS Admiral Nakamov had suffered another small delay. Though no details are available on why the startup of the second reactor was delayed by over a month, it is possible that demagnetization of the vessel could have played a role. It is reported that demagnetization of the hull needed to be completed before both reactors were to be activated. With both reactors started up and active, the modernization and recommissioning of the RFS Admiral Nakamov has passed another important milestone. Activation of both reactors means that the vessel can now start to operate under her own power and become less dependent on external electric power supplies. The next steps will now most likely include the testing all the onboard electronics and see if they are powered correctly by the ship's own power generators. At the same time, reactor crews can be trained on how to manage the daily reactor operations and react to shifting needs in electric power consumption and reactor output. Both nuclear reactors are also used for the propulsion of the vessel though at this moment there is no indication when the propulsion systems on board of the RFS Admiral Nakamov will be tested. The vessel is currently undergoing factory trails before being cleared to move into sea trails. As such, we can assume that testing of the propulsion plant will take place at the later stages of the factory trails. The modernization of the RFS Admiral Nakamov has not been going smoothly over the past year and many delays were noted. Decommissioned in 1997, the vessel was to be repaired and modernized and brought back into active service to replace the other Kirov-class cruiser RFS Pyotr Veliki. Contracts between the Russian government and the Sevmash shipyard were signed in 2013 with the delivery date initially set for 2020. The modernization includes the installation of modern sensors and weapon systems such as replacing the P-700 Granite anti-ship missiles with 10 vertical launch cells that can hold up to 8 modern missiles such as the Onyx anti-ship missile, the Caliber cruise missiles and the Zircon hypersonic missiles, given the vessel a capacity of 80 anti-ship missiles. The vessel will also have its air defense systems updated with the S-300F air defense missiles being replaced by a naval variant of the S-400 air defense system with a capacity of up to 96 anti-air missiles. The vessel will also have 8 Pantsir air defense system that will replace the 6 Kashtan close and weapon systems. The repair and modernization of the vessel has suffered from multiple delays over the past, postponing its return to active service. It should be noted that the vessel has spent over a decade being decommissioned and that bringing her back into active service in a modernized form would be a challenge. As such, delays were expected. However, Russia's war in Ukraine has placed additional burdens on Russia's shipbuilding capabilities. Navies are generally being described as heavy in technology, requiring modern and up-to-date electronics and sensors to remain relevant. Most modern Russian sensors, electronics, and weapon systems require Western-made components. Western sanctions against Russia have made it difficult to acquire these components and when they are sourced through intermediaries such as neutral countries, the price for these components increase significantly as third parties seek to make a maximum profit. Funding of the shipyards has also been an issue as Russia's economy is getting strained by the ongoing war effort though Russia continues to increase its defense budget to rebuild its military potential. Sevmash shipyard does find itself in a relatively comfortable position compared to other shipyards. It is the only shipyard in Russia that specializes in the construction and maintenance of nuclear-powered submarines, both attack as ballistic missile submarines, and as such is directly linked to Russia's strategic deterrence. This direct link to Russia's strategic maritime deterrence ensures that funding and support for Sevmash is assured. Even though the shipyard has been reporting delays in most of its projects in recent years, likely a result of the effects of the war in Ukraine, it nevertheless has a solid track record in delivering ships. 
Tough modernization of the RFS Admiral Nakamura took a long time, it went smoother than the modernization of the aircraft carrier RFS Admiral Kuznetsov which was plagued by several accidents and whose return to active service seems very questionable. Activation of both reactors also means that it is certain that the cruiser RFS Admiral Nakamura will return to active service regardless of the speed of the modernization process and progress of the factory and sea trails modernizing and refueling these reactors was a complicated process and with both of them operational, the Russian Navy might seek to have the cruiser at sea as often as possible and maximize her operational potential before the nuclear fuel is spent. Once the vessel is back in active service, she will take on the role of flagship of the Northern Fleet and will serve as the most powerful vessel of the Russian Navy. Though her design is not the most modern, her new electronics, sensors, and large capacity of modern anti-ship and air defense missiles will ensure her position as the capital vessel in the Russian Navy and be a counterweight to a Western carrier task force due to her large arsenal of offensive and defensive missiles. Once back in service she will operate together with the RFS Marshal Ustinov, a Slava-class cruiser, and a fleet of older Udaloy-class destroyers and a handful of ocean-going Admiral Gorshkov-class frigates.